Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. I work at the Adventure Challenge. Yes, you do some consulting over there. That is correct. <laughs> that What's is, your point? That is one of the things that I do. <laughs> and uh, because of that, I've like really enjoyed the idea of adventures. Mm-hmm. Like when you do things for the first time that you've never done before. Yeah, you just jump into it and go for it. Yeah. So that's what I have asked Justin to do. I am part of an adventure today. Yeah. This is the very first time this has ever happened. Yeah. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, Yeah. totally. I have asked him. I invited a guest on Mm -hmm. who I'm so excited about. I'll introduce in a second. And for a specific reason, to tell a specific story. Am I about to get confronted? Is that what this is? It's an intervention. (laughs) I wish I would have thought of that. That Uh would be good. Oh, that would be a fun episode. Intervention for Justin. Intervention. I'll end you if you ever do that. Oh, would you? I think you'd probably like it. I think it'd be hysterical. I'd be like, what am I being intervened for? (laughs) Intervene away. (laughs) Um, Am I too charismatic? Am I too charming? (laughs) Am I I too sexy? Am I too amazing? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Am I the best husband? Yeah, it's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're too Mm -hmm. good looking. Yeah, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... um, we are doing this where I invited guests on. We're going to talk. She shared this with me and I was so inspired by her story. And it was it's so real and authentic in her and I think very challenging for me personally. And so I thought, yeah, the whole world needs to hear this. So I'm very excited to have her. Her name is Stephanie. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you guys for having me. Mm. She is an employee at the Adventure Challenge, which is how I got to meet her. And Mm -hmm. she is sweet and powerful and fun and funny and uh, very uh, passionate. And I like that about her. Thank you, Abby. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. I yeah. feel so excited to be here, honestly. This yeah, is th- so fun. Me too. I'm like, what are we getting I know. into? You are really I'm being surprised. For the surprise. Like <laughs> uh-huh. this is we were talking about the adventure challenge. This is it. This, this is, is very mm-hmm. much the, the heart adventure. Of it. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Yeah. So we're the adventure challenge it. is a scratch off book where you commit to doing an adventure before you know what it is. So you commit and then you scratch yes. it off and then you have to do it. You just scratched off your adventure. <laughs> yes. Here we are. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Here we are. We should like make them pay us for like the kickbacks. Oh, uh, yeah. Stuff like uh-huh, this. Really. And yeah. also, this better be a good adventure. So no pressure. <laughs> but... Oh, man. <laughs> no it's pressure. like no take backs, though. So, you know, it is <laughs> what it is. Yeah, yeah, you're just for what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So Stephanie was mm-hmm. sharing with me the other day because I walked up to her and one of our other the one of the other people that worked at the Adventure Challenge, and they were like posed so perfectly <laughs> against the wall. It looked like it was like a band shot. Um, you guys like, just like hang out and pose. I mean, like, they were in right. separate places yeah. against the wall. We were both on our phones. Yes, he was on a phone call, and I was like just look like texting or something. But somehow the way they were both leaning felt very like picturesque Uh uh-huh and so i took a picture of it and then was trying to tag stephanie Mm -hmm. in it because she's in it and then that is when she told me that she is not on social media yes and i thought interesting wow yes and so yeah so i wanted her to share her journey about why she's not on social media and what that has looked like and the kind of the different ebbs and flows and pros and cons of it because mm-hmm. it's such a unique decision wait a second does stephanie even exist <laughs> <laughs> little do you know exactly. that that actually is a part of her story <laughs> yes that exact quote or that exact sentence is, is a part of it really yeah, yeah it was the beginning of it if yeah. anything uh, why don't you just jump in and start yeah. at the beginning and we'll go yeah. from there so um it's been almost a year that i've been off um it's gonna be a year in a few weeks and It started off because I don't know if you guys ever watched the Fire Festival documentary. Oh, yes. The the Fire Festival that was went to the crapper and and was like a total sham. Oh, I actually know what what you're (laughs) talking about. When you told us originally, I didn't know. But yes, Uh that's crazy. Yeah. And they were trying to, in a way, bring like Instagram to life. Like it was this whole experience that was crazy and everyone wanted to be a part of it. 
Well, I was watching that documentary about three years ago when it came out. And there was a quote that was, if you don't have social media, do you even exist? Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. And yeah. I remember being like, okay, I hate that that is the reality of we're kind of living in this like double reality that there's this world and then this virtual world mm. where we all post like our highlight reels and somehow we have we can create an identity for ourselves on there. Yeah. And it mm. does kind of become like this double reality you can that we brand live in. yourself. On, right on there right yeah mm -hmm. and so that concept just like stayed in my brain like that quote and me mm -hmm. how much i hated that um and like to preface this like i am not against social media by any means i think that it's so great and it's sure. changed culture in such a great you know way what? okay yeah Forgive i mean me. like where would you get to see all the butt models if there wasn't social media where would i ever see your butt if you went on instagram <laughs> that's yeah. actually funny. or what you ate or oh, yeah. you know that's so true okay wait i'm about to be the worst host ever but before we jump into this, mm. why don't we start? Because I realized I didn't even like introduce you. Give us a little bit of your just overall story. Who yes. you are, where you're from, Great. how you got here. Perfect. Um, so I am Colombian. Ooh. Born in Colombia. Really? Yes. Um, I left Colombia when I was two years old. Okay. Moved to New, New York that City. Was a, that was a long trip for you, huh? That was a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a long trip to New York City uh -huh. um, where we lived. I lived with my family there for like four years uh -huh. um, and then moved to Miami. So oh. I grew up in Miami. You've had very unique uh, cultures. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And big cities yes. that I've lived in. So. I grew up in Miami since I was six um, till I was 18 when I moved to Reading mm. for um, BSSM and all of BSSM that. BSSM is a ministry school here. Yes, yes. ministry yeah. school. Sorry you Reading. left Miami for this. Yeah, you know, it was <laughs> it was a very different experience uh -huh, for sure. Totally. I, the culture shock was just huge. But, um, but yeah, it's been a really great, it was a really good time. I lived it for two years. I moved to L.A., for two years as well. That's You've cool. lived in all the all the three cities. major cities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so I lived. Yeah, I went to L.A. Lived there for a couple years. Um, and you're like, you know what? I choose Reading. I definitely left Reading, not thinking I was ever going to come back. <laughs> um, but I was drawn back, and I did it. And um, and yeah, and I've been here now for like about three years. Um, have had just great job opportunities here mm -hmm. that have really caused me to stay. And right now with the Adventure Challenge, it's been really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you're so good at what you do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. It's a fun, fun environment for sure. And so, yeah, so that's kind of like what, how I got here since I was born in Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm 25, so, yeah. which kind of plays into social media. You don't meet a lot of people my age that are not on social media. Oh, yeah. Um, and... And yeah, so that's a little bit about myself. Yeah. And um, and when you journey. say you don't meet people your age that aren't because when was social media a big thing your whole life? Yeah. So for me, it was I kind of remember still, you know, like the new computers that would make the little sound for it to connect to the Internet. Oh, still yeah. a little bit of the dial up. Yeah. You yeah, can yeah. still remember a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I still huh? Like if I were to hear the sound, I would for sure be like, whoa. I remember that you know yes. uh -huh. it was but i still in a way grew up into technology you know like yeah generations before me actually knew what it was to not have a computer or not we, have a cell phone we, we, we did, did. <laughs> yeah. we did yeah. generations old, old people know what it's <laughs> like to not have this <laughs> yeah just yeah i was kind of right there where it was you know i was in elementary school and like the razor was already in and oh, yeah. you know like some technology was already there people so already had true. cell phones wow um and for me, I, like my fifth, like when I was in fifth grade, so I must have been like 10, I already had MySpace. Yeah. You know, which I'm not sure why I was allowed to have MySpace when I was 10 years old, <laughs> but I was. And yeah. so, you know, social media was already a thing for me since a very young age. Right. Um, which kind of plays into the story okay. as we go continue ahead, into go it. Go ahead back into it. I didn't mean to oh. interrupt you, but you watched no, that's Fire so Festival. That's so great. Um, so yeah, so I watched Fire Festival, that quote, that stayed in my mind for, you know, some years of me like, wow, that sucks. Like, it's true. Like, do you even exist if you don't have social media? Um, but I think that thought started growing in me of, I kind of already had a love-hate relationship. We've been hearing mm. about a lot of things of social media and comparison and how much time you consume in, or, yeah, consume in it and different things like that. But um, I was always able to get 
like take breaks, like delete it from my phone for a while mm. or, you know, completely like deactivate it for a little bit. And I think the most I ever did was three months wow, of like being off though. of it. Yeah. And yeah. um, and, you know, it's funny because when you do that, people are usually like, wow, do you feel so much better? Do you feel so uh much more free or do you have so much more time and it's like yes like <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes I, do. I do <laughs> but it's funny because everyone like knows they know that's what you would feel yeah but exactly. they don't do it exactly yes um but you know a lot of people take breaks and that's great um for me though it was this thought of um how, why is it that i could get it off my phone but i can't completely delete it Mm. there's something you in mean me eliminate your entire social yes. life that was like you know like it's sitting up there in the cloud and i won't delete it completely right i'll i'll take it off my phone but if i had to i'll lo log back in and right. there it is <laughs> you know but i can't just completely delete it and know that i would go from having followers to zero followers <laughs> that i would like disconnect Ooh. from you know like my friends that maybe don't live here and still yes. live in miami or around the world or whatever it is like there's so many things that come with it that my life is a part. Like it's a part of my life that to delete it just felt so crazy. Mm -hmm. And I think just the idea of that just like bothered me. So you're like, I feel addicted on some yeah. level if I can't delete it all the way. Right. Like if I don't want to let it go, it means it has power over me. Right. Exactly. And it's also that, I mean, I just a side note, I'm thinking of that. I'm like, how do it, it, it takes time to, not just build followers, but build the connections with people like, oh, I finally found all these people from all these different places. Right. And if I just eliminate that, what what if I ever wanted to get back to that? How would I get back to all of them? Are they yeah. just gone forever in my life? I don't know. There's so many avenues. Exactly. There's so many thoughts, but there's such funny thoughts when you really think about it. Mm -hmm. But also it makes complete sense. Like it is a reality of our time and there's beautiful things that have come with it, you know, um, but Anyway, fast forward, you know, three years of me kind of thinking this through. I watched another documentary called The Social Dilemma, which mm. some people have watched. I haven't so. watched that yet, but I okay. wanted to. Yeah, it's 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 something. It really <laughs> makes you think about things. It, does yeah. It? What did it bring up for you? For me, for people who haven't seen it, give mm -hmm. a recap. Yeah. Um. So, The Social Dilemma, they basically bring in people that have um played a part in creating some of these social platforms mm -hmm. and they talk about their experience in doing it and how a lot of the times their idea wasn't they never saw how it was actually going to affect culture mm -hmm. and it went in a direction mm -hmm. they weren't necessarily planning on oh, like yeah. when they were like the like button they're like that's such a positive thing you know right. you can actually just affirm someone and be like thumbs up like oh. good job this is so good they didn't think it was going to become this huge thing of like now there's you're comparison and, with it and yeah. you're not lovable if you don't get enough likes and right you now it's like the way that it shows the world how much value or not you I, have I, i've seen people get in in um, relational fights that, that have c conversed with me in my office about like and then they they wouldn't even like my photos and i'm like who freaking cares yeah. like yeah and literally offended with friends that didn't hit like on some photo that got posted yeah, yeah right very true so yeah. you don't realize yeah the weight and of like what really that really affected people yeah mm -hmm. exactly so in the, in the in the documentary you have some of these people that played a part of this and they're just like we just didn't understand how this was going to be and the thing that was really hard for me was this documentary came out in 2020 where obviously it was an intense year for many yes. reasons right and they actually talked about algorithms Mm -hmm. And about how that affected so much of that year, mm. because the more which is a very known thing, like on social media, the more you click, the more you see one thing, the more they give you of that same thing, which yes. is why you yes. can go on your the page where it's like um, suggested things. And you're like, oh, cool. Like, I want to watch and see this, these things. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that gets tricky when we had a year like 2020 and people mm -hmm. just kept seeing their own opinion over and over again yes which yeah, created echo chamber mm -hmm. yeah which created you know a, a division of more like extremism exactly yeah. more of the like i and then also like clickbait algorithms that you get more attention if something is debated and if you have people fighting over the post and if you have so then yeah. you want you end up creating more and more extreme posts mm -hmm. about opinions because those get a higher algorithm they get higher likes right they get high, and so now the things you're seeing all the times are things that you agree with 
you're constantly having your emotions refueled. Yeah. So you might feel angry about something and then you're seeing posts that will keep you right. angry anger. over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah. You might feel like something was unjust, but now you're having posts that are villainizing the other side over and over. Yeah. Like social media actually ends up reinforcing oftentimes the triggers you already have. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And you think that you're right because you're seeing this on other people. Everyone people's. agrees with me. Totally. But what you don't realize is that they're just feeding you the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also makes you feel like, how can people think anything else? Right. That's the part that was really hard because it, it's like, why? Mm. Like, people can't even understand why somebody would think something different. Yep. And it's because that other person's getting fed the same thing yes. that they believe that's uh-huh. opposite to yours. Yes. And so it's coming from the same source, but completely different narratives. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, they talk about that on on, on the so documentary, sure. which was a part of the thing where I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, but the hard thing in the documentary, it follows like a family and the way that the phone mm. kind of. OK, have you guys seen Inside Out? The yes. movie? You know how they have the little emotions like, yes. you know, so they do the same thing on documentary, but with like little people behind the screen. And that's the part that gets me. So they, they'll show like this guy on the screen. Kind of like if he was inside the phone mm. trying to get the kid's attention. Wow. So they're like, okay, we're losing him. We're losing him. Send him this thing. He likes sports or whatever. Oh, so like wow. from social media. Social yes. media right. is like trying to keep you hooked. Yes. So they show it to you from that perspective, which just blew wow. my mind. It was such a cool perspective. But you start seeing like how it starts affecting this family. And point is, you know. What kinds of effects did you see? Um. So... It was the um, the narrative thing of mm-hmm. like people because they did bring a lot of like the things that happened twenty twenty through that. So some of that stuff you saw how like they started getting like and here was the hardest thing. So there was a scene where the boy, there's a teenage boy, he starts looking almost like a puppet, and he starts just like turning back and forth with all mm. these things that like pi- like uh, pictures of things that the social people are like putting. So his and arms he, and his body is all puppeteering yeah. with each and everything. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And you just see his mind just like can't take mm-hmm. everything that they're giving to him. He's yes. like oversaturated with he doesn't know what to do with his big problems and big information. Oh, and he yeah. starts just like losing it. And the weird thing for me was that the face that that kid had, I was like, I have seen that face before mm-hmm. in the people around me, wow. especially wow. in this time. I have seen that wow. face that almost feels like trauma. There's like a yes. shutdown. There's this like intensity and 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 i'm like i have seen that face Mm -hmm. i probably had have had that face at Mm -hmm. some point and it felt so real to me Mm. that right after that documentary i was like i think i'm gonna delete my instagram like i think i'm officially at that place and it felt like years of that kind of building up for me Mm -hmm. so what i did that i told you about this that day was i actually brought out my journal and i wrote out reasons why i would want to keep it and reasons why I would want to get Whoa. rid of it. She brought it with her. Isn't that cool? Did you really? Yeah, I did. I asked her if she'd bring her list of what she wrote a couple years ago. And would you would you be open to reading it yeah. to her? Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll read it. Um, so I wrote <laughs> contemplating deleting social media was my title. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, that you have titles for your journal. It's so organized, and that's why you're good at your job. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Actually, usually I never look back on my journaling. Yeah. So I just like scribble. So uh-huh. this is me going to try to read my scribbles. But <laughs> um, but so I wrote fears and it's um, OK. I will know what's happening in the world. Yep. I know I won't know what is trendy. Yep. I won't stay connected to people. Mm. People will forget me. Mm. Wow. I don't know a world outside social media. Mm. Is the world really more entertaining or more beautiful? Mm. Will I feel like the outcast? Wow. That's so that good. That is so good. Those were my fears when yes. I like, like writing them out, which are very real. Yeah. You know, I think everyone can relate to that. Right. Yes. And then I wrote realizations is how I also titled it. Um, but it was. Um, I was on social media since being a kid. Mm -hmm. I don't know a world outside of social media and technology. Mm -hmm. My thoughts and point of views are always being influenced. So good. This is funny. If I'm stuck in a matrix, I don't know that I am. (laughs) 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 That was me being a little too extreme. (laughs) So great. Um, Social media has created my narrative and reality. 
Mm. Um, and so, yeah, those were some of like the things that as I was writing it out and thinking it out, I'm like, wow, like this is how this is really affecting me. Like, what is life outside of this? And the fears is really the thing where it made me think like, I am concerned that I don't even know if life is more entertaining or beautiful outside of social yeah. media. So that's like, crazy. I, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I haven't thought about that, considered mm-hmm. that because I lived outside of it. Right. Yeah. Right. And I haven't considered like, there's actually a full generation that have been plugged into the matrix. Yeah. Like for the whole I, time. to me, social media is the matrix. We're lost in this thing when, and we're, we're not really living life yeah. outside of it. Barely, you know? Yeah. But go, yeah. Go ahead. This is fa- fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So, um, some of my like then I wrote like motivations was to to get off of it was being free from the narrative mm. um, that social media or ads are making me believe. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, see the gaps on society because mm. you could actually like start getting out of it and paying attention to like, wait, well, how is this actually affecting people? You know, yeah. um, I wrote like free mind and soul open more to creativity, to yeah. reading, to books um, less social pressure, yeah. less fear of man, yep. eyes being open Come to on. the truth, mm-hmm. um, no longer being a part of a system I have no control over. Wow. And then my last thing was like freedom. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, it was just really crazy when I wrote those things out because I started realizing my reasons for keeping it are all ego. Yeah. Fears about me being um, a part of me being perceived a certain way or me will staying connected be will i still be exactly yeah where my motivation to get off of it was like freedom and <laughs> I'm like that <laughs> sounds pretty good you totally. know totally so that's what I, I once i finished writing those things out i deleted it right off so i got off instagram you I, which i just want to say what you did was so brilliant and most mm-hmm. people don't know how to do this mm-hmm. and it's a great thing to do which was you were honest about why am i keeping it and what yeah. would i get if i let it go Right. And most people are so scared of loss of something that is comfort for them. Yeah. They're not thinking through what do I get when I let go of something? Yeah. Yeah. And so um, that is brilliant. Yeah. And I think that the hard thing for me is that everyone knows that there's hard, like there's negative things that come with social media. Yes. But we're all okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. It's, it, it reminds me of there's this back when I was younger, they did this document, not a documentary, but an experiment TV show where they were talking about McDonald's. Mm. And they're like, they have all these little kids and they're taking all the actual ingredients of what goes into a chicken McNugget. Mm-hmm. And they literally start throwing it in and they're like, would you eat this? And they're like, Ew, no. <laughs> and they're like one after another, putting it through the grinder. Would you, yeah. do you think this is good? And they show them the slop. Is this good? And they're mm-hmm. like, Ew, no. And then they cook up a chicken McNugget, like in front of them, put it all together. Oh like, would you like some? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just watch the kids devour all the, yeah. all the nuggets right yeah. there on the spot. Mm-hmm. That's exactly like what you're saying yeah. is like, we know what's inside of it, inside of us, but right. we're still going to look past it and devour it. Yeah, right. And it's something that you're talking about that is so interesting. I think we do this a lot in culture right now is there's like an, an inner knowing, mm-hmm. like there's something inside of us. You know, like I feel that like I will be on social media and um, we'll just feel that comparison or that frustration with my life or Mm -hmm. whatever that or my limitations or whatever that is. Yeah. But and then I just am like, oh, this is just social media. And I might get off because of that. But there is that thing of like, why are we willing to have a friend in our life that is hurting us regularly? Right. Mm -hmm. Like if if you thought about social media like a friend. And you're like, this friend is often telling you what you don't have, who yeah. you're not, yeah. who you should be. They, they aren't accepting you as you are. Mm-hmm. And um, and sometimes they pick fights at you for no reason. And <laughs> like if you think about it like as a friend and they're constantly opinionated and they're constantly telling you about politics and they're constantly telling you the world's going to like whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Why is it? Because what you're saying is so true. Yeah, I wouldn't have I that. Have, I wouldn't have that friend in my like a physical friend. Oh yeah, yeah. That talked to me like that. I'd be like, "You're not a friend. Get out yeah, of my like, life. Yeah, like get out of my life right now." Uh-huh. Or like yeah. if you just thought about the feelings you feel in social media, where you just feel like sometimes you feel that need to be more or that need that you should be. I know one one of the things I struggled with so much, especially when I was sick, is I would see people and I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, I'm not doing anything with my life." Mm-hmm. You know, like I should be doing ten more things. I should already be here. 
But I'm like, if I just thought about those feelings and I thought, oh, the way I don't need these feelings is to just not be on here. Mm -hmm. Why is it that compromise looks so good? Because that's the feeling we have. We all intuitively know something about social media Mm -hmm. that it's it's causing pain. Yeah. And we all shut that emotion down. And I'm the same, me included. Listen, I'm still on social media. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I think that that's the that's part of the whole thing of social media, because now so much of the world revolves on it. Yes. I have missed so many birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> I have missed so many people like ge- getting engaged and me finding out so much later totally. or babies being born that I didn't know about. Like, yes. there, I'm missing out on on a lot of things about life. So there is a sacrifice that comes with being off of it. Yes. Because you miss on things like that, because culture has become something so wrapped around it. Exactly. And I think that's what starts making it difficult because we don't want to miss on that. And then we live in a time where anyone can become an influencer. Anyone can become, quote unquote, anyone, famous. Yes. yes. <laughs> so that has been even a hard thing. That's been something I've struggled with because I'm like, I love creativity and yeah. I love like working on music or mm-hmm. fashion or different creative things. And it makes me think, should I be creating a brand for myself on social right. media? Like, should I be working towards that? Am I being so dumb choosing to be off of it when I should just be going along with culture and going yes. along with what the times are right now? Right. And it's, I think that idea is what really stops people from getting off because and they even talk about this in the documentary. Like it's everyone's like, well, why get off of it? Like, just deal with it. Just right. just, just figure- learn how to be fine feeling jealous. Just learn how exactly. to, to be depressed and push through. Right. right. Or learn how to not have comparison. And I understand there's a healthy part of that that you can. Yes. And there's there's a lot. And nowadays, there's a lot more of mental health and mental awareness when yes. it comes to social media. But at the same time, it it does take a lot to like, choose to be actually there has been a culture that is out there and I just don't want to be a part of it because I want to see what life is without it and I don't mm. want to just go with the flow yes. because I just don't want that like I want to decide that for myself yeah. and you know one thing I told Abby that day that we chatted about this was um I, at the end of the day, have never, we were, like we were talking at the beginning, have never had a life without social media. Mm-hmm. So at the very least, I was like, I want to know what life is without it. Yes. What happens when I'm not on social media? Because I have absolutely no idea. Totally. Because I never have. And there's been a lot of good things well, so that have start. surprised me. You delete me. it. Yes. Immediately, do you have any regret? Absolutely. You're like, oh, no, 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 just do. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just did that. That's it. Actually, it was funny because it told me, um, I think it told me like, you have 30 days to change your mind or something. Yes. And I was like, great, I have 30 days. And then when the 30 days came, I, d- I was going to get it back. I was like, <laughs> I'm getting it back because it does genuinely feel like an addiction. I was like, okay, yes. I'll get it back. And then um, I could not figure out how to. So then <laughs> the 30 days were over and I was like, so you accidentally, crap, that's it. It's gone. You know, that's hysterical. I think it's also hysterical how they hook people. They're like, we'll, we'll give you 30 yeah, days because most people can't commit to 30 days right, of not, of, doing, of not doing an addictive yes. behavior. Right, so it's true. Yeah. there's your 30 day yeah, limit. We'll them. see you in 30 days. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it's saying. <laughs> and I got off Instagram and Facebook wow. at that point. Wow. Um, which, I mean, at that point, I didn't use Facebook a lot, but there was still, like, some really good old friends that weren't there, you know? Totally. Um, but, yeah, so, so, so yeah. What that, was it like? It was, it was just weird. I think I just, if, if anything, I also had to be aware of the people around me being on it. Mm. So, I would just kind of sit there because people would be oh, on their phones. a lot of right, times. Because now there's no more real social interaction. Scrolling. Everyone's just sloth scrolling. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm How, just. Does that, is that still a common yeah, like I'm like people are trying to take pictures of like we're at a party or something. Everybody's taking pictures or videos and posting it, and I'm just like, "Do you feel like a ghost?" I'm like, "Can you show me that later?" <laughs> like, <laughs> can you show me I want to see it, you know. Um, but but yeah, it just feels. I think that's what I started becoming more aware of. I think at the beginning, I started becoming more aware of the more simple things that we think it is to be without social media. Mm. Like I was like, "Oh, I have time. Like, what am I going to do?" Oh. Or you know, "Oh, I'm aware of everyone being on their phones right now." And I'm aware that this person can have a conversation with me without looking at their phone. Like I was aware about those small things. Yeah. But it was really into like month five or six where I started noticing like a little bit more of a deeper things that I started becoming aware of. And 
this also came because in our conversation, I told Abby, part of the reason that sometimes I still think about getting back is because it makes it more difficult to date yes. without social media. Because yes. you know that people like, will do the whole like DM thing or you're, yep. ta- or you're seeing people that are uh, like far away or whatever. But then I was like, but I feel more confident. So mm. it makes it be a little bit of like, well, which one do I rather have? Like confident I'm either close. Yeah. Be more confident or actually have more people, you know? So, um, but yeah. Month- Why do you think you've, are you going to talk about feeling more confident? Yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. So, um, yeah. So it, it was more than just like the comparison thing, you know? I think what I started realizing was um, it happened because I walked into, I went to a murder in the dark party. Fun. Which I if love you don't murder know in the dark. what murder in the dark is, because it sounds so intense. Oh, it does sound so intense. <laughs> it You're is right. a game where you turn off the lights and, there's it's a, like mafia. It's it's a game where you're uh, one person is a murderer and they're trying to secretly kill people and you're trying to figure out who it is. And yeah. 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 And then you turn on. Yeah. And then you decide the who, who is a murderer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So I show up to this party and everyone's I have never been to like a murder in the dark party. Like this was like a whole thing. I played the game like it just naturally happened. Yeah. But I show up to this house and everyone's wearing black. And I'm like wearing like a bright jacket. <laughs> I was like, oops, like I did not think this through. Like, yeah, you should wear black. Totally. But I remember I walked in being so myself and like just kind of being happy and loud about it and like kind of joking with myself, which is not how I usually would approach a situation wow. like that. I usually would be the person who would walk in a little bit more quiet, observe mm-hmm. it, see who's in the room and mm-hmm. see how am I supposed to adapt to this room. Wow. And what I realized after that night, I was just so like fully myself. I went home and I was like, I did not even second guess who was in the room, how wow. I was supposed to react, wow. how I was supposed to respond. Like I was just, I just brought you were me. present. I was present. You weren't like psychoanalyzing everything. Exactly. You weren't trying to be anyone. Right. And I was just fully myself. And I started realizing how social media allows you to have very preconceived ideas of people. And it makes you be like, okay, I want to go see, find this person on Instagram. Now I know who they're friends with. Now I know how what their aesthetic is. Now I know like where they've lived or how they dress or what they care about. And I start creating like an idea mm-hmm. about this person. And so when I see them in, in, in real life, I'm like, oh, I already have a preconceived idea of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I either feel intimidated by you. Yes. Or I feel... Um, like, I don't like you or I really like you and now it's making me shy and I don't totally. want to talk to you. Like, there's so many different reactions that already makes me feel where when you don't have those preconceived ideas of people. They're just people. They're just people. And I get to ask them and get to know them, mm-hmm. not just get From to know. them sharing. Yes. Not just get to know this quote unquote brand Perfect that they looking. have. Right. Well, and it's a dehumanization, right? Right. Like that's like social media under that context of thinking in that way. It's Mm -hmm. like, actually, we've all dehumanized each other because we're all just brands. We're not actually human beings that we really know the personality and the experience of who one is. And now we are left with these preconceived ideas because someone curates like these are the ideas you should think about me. Yeah. And that's all you're left with. Right. Yeah. It's really cool. So it's really a process of rehumanizing everyone around you. Yeah. And exploring them and experiencing them mm-hmm. firsthand for the first time. Right. Being wow. able to ask questions and mm-hmm. see how they respond in person to what you have to say. It's just so different. Yeah. You know, and I think after like month five, I, it's when I started realizing like I just I'm just showing up and there's a human in front of me and I'm bringing me and we're doing this like humans, you know, and it really started like affecting it really started affecting my life and confidence. And I, I realized because now I'm like, oh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not trying to change who I am to be friends with who I think mm. this person is. Yes. But I'm able to actually just get to know this person and bring me mm-hmm. to this room, you know. And so that was a really big thing. Mm-hmm. And it also allowed me to feel a lot more present. Yeah. Which was a really hard thing for me. I mean, like I mentioned in the beginning, I've lived in all these big cities. So anytime I was in Reading, Reading being a smaller town, and not having much to do after like eight o'clock, if that, maybe seven. It's very true. <laughs> um, I, a lot of the time, wanted to move and wanted to um, just want to go, to go back to LA or wanted to just be anywhere but here, pretty New much. New York, Miami. Yes, I'm like <laughs> anything. Um, and 
through 2020 was a big thing for me a big topic in my personal life was to just be present Mm -hmm. and learn how to be here because i started realizing like there's so much gold for me here Mm -hmm. but my mind is always wanting to be somewhere else that i am completely missing out on what's actually available for me in the here and now come on and even realizing like the future is really just an illusion that we never know if we're going to get to anyway. And it's probably going to look different than what we think anyway. Yep. So all I really have is right now. And I just through when I, when I was on social, I realized I always wanted to be somewhere else. Like the FOMO effect was strong, you know, oh, because of mm-hmm. social media. I haven't. That's a great concept. The FOMO effect, because now yeah. you're aware of every fun thing somebody's doing right now. Yeah. Now you're yeah. thinking and now you're comparing what you're doing. Right. Like on your Friday night with yeah. what you saw everybody else. Exactly. Doing. Yeah. And I haven't even thought of that. Yeah. When you know that, you know, my friends in L.A., maybe they posted on a Friday night. They're having a good time. And then next Friday, they may have been home, but they didn't post that bit. Yes. No. You only post the ones <laughs> when you're out. So that's what yes. you're seeing, you know. But so I think when I got off of it also a few months in, like it started feeling like, okay, I'm actually here. Mm. And I think that was a big thing for me when I deleted it. It had been a whole like 2020 building up for me of that topic of being present where I was like, I'm choosing to live where I'm living Mm. and I'm choosing the community that I have and I'm choosing the surroundings that I have and the job that I have. And I'm going to be right here and make the best out of it and let that take me wherever. Mm. But I do not want to be like a victim of what I think my life should be or a victim of what I think my future should be, you know? And so I think when I got off social too, I started realizing that being a lot easier because- Because you're not always wishing you were somewhere else. Yes. It's like, I only have what's in front of me. I'm not like, yeah, I'm just not seeing everything that I'm missing out on Mm. and how my life sucks in comparison. It's interesting because FOMO is a very real thing in life. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of what takes us out of being present is all of our ideas of, of what all the other options are that could be better. Keep us from enjoying what we are, what we're currently doing. And it feels, and even like you said, living, like when I see pictures of where other people are living or where other people are vacationing or wherever, Mm -hmm. there's always that feeling I should be traveling more or I should be, or I wish we had restaurants. <laughs> yep. That's you see true. anybody who doesn't live in Reading and you're like, <laughs> I hate the food here. That's true. Um, but it's a, the, the, I, I'm just like connecting to what you're saying. I mean, like, mm-hmm. yes, you'd have so much less FOMO if you weren't always looking at what other people were doing. I was, I was thinking about, um, my journey of learning how to come alive mm-hmm. in my early twenties. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I got married to Abby at 25 at your mm-hmm. age and I, my space was a thing, right. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't on a phone, mm-hmm. it was right. on a computer. You couldn't access yeah, it. You true. were just accessing it like this all the time. And, yeah. and you, you, you checked in whatever, but there wasn't as, it wasn't the same type of experience that's happening with Facebook and Facebook was just, it was in its early uh, infancies of mm-hmm. stuff at that point. And so. Yeah, I don't remember seeing pictures on MySpace when I started on it of like what people were doing daily. Right. I, like, yeah. I, I made I made the funniest stuff on my MySpace. Like picture, yes. It was like a, a, a playful place to be mm-hmm. and sometimes connect with people. But it wasn't really. It a, wasn't posting our lives. Every it, day. it wasn't about all of our lives every yeah. day. Um, and so for me, part of what was happening is when I was learning how to come alive, the dialogue that I was having with God was God was like teaching me how to be present with my moment Mm -hmm. and how to find the beauty in every interaction with every human being and being fully present inside of my marriage and when with my emotions, my pain and seeing the beauty and creation around me. And I think about that and that already was a difficult experience of learning how Mm -hmm. to come alive inside of that. And then I think. What if I had been plugged into the matrix as I'm referring to that now, as we're kind of talking with this, yeah. this the social media, like oh, that you, season would have tormented. It would have been in a whole other level of torment to yeah. actually unhinge because you have to get out. I didn't I didn't have the fear of missing out because you weren't mm-hmm. seeing th- 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 all the things. Yes, that was should. bombarding me and chiseling away at me inside right. of that. And so I go, I'm listening to you talk about this. And it's to me, it's a revolutionary thought for your generation, especially. Mm hmm that was born into it Mm -hmm. and i i'm looking at i'm going wow you were such a risk taker and so brave Mm -hmm. considering Mm -hmm. the conditioning that's happened around you and what you'd have to face to actually work that out inside of your soul Mm -hmm. yeah 
So I think it's really cool that you're able to unhinge. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was, yeah, there's, there's some, there's some good lessons in the other side, I think, you know, that we just didn't know about that Mm -hmm. when we're born into it. This, that even reminds me right before this, I was having coffee with a friend and we were like briefly talking about this. And, um, and she was like, yeah, the other day I, I just felt like I realized that every time I want to decompress, like if I'm at work, I'm like too busy and I'm like, oh, I need a break. I just open up my Instagram. Yes. And she was like, I probably should more like pay attention to myself and be like, what do you actually need? What is the feeling I'm avoiding? Yeah. Like, what am I avoiding? What do I actually need? Like, do I need to go on a walk? Do I need, is there something else that's like a root of something? But it's this quick distraction that just completely takes that away from us. And it's just like, well, I could just go off and completely just shut it down and keep going. Yep. And it's kind of scary when you think of it in that way. You know, I well, think it's it's just robbing us a moment of of growth. Something that I was actually thinking is and and I know Justin has actually talked about this before with me is that uh, flight is a trauma response. Mm-hmm. And one of the ways we go into flight, there's lots of different ways people go into flight. You can go into flight by performing. Like I'm going to do everything at my job perfectly. That's like a, a protective stance. Um, you can go into flight through cleaning your house, getting like really busy. Um, one of the ways we go into flight is scrolling. We're mm-hmm. just, we're trying to get out of this moment by, by yeah. g- flying from here to the here, to here, to here, to here, just yeah. as quickly as we can for exactly what you're saying. It pulls us out of whatever emotions we're having mm-hmm. and puts us, it, it's kind of like lulls us, but it's like a weird thing because it pulls you out of the emotions you're having, but actually puts you into emotions. Right. <laughs> They're just, because I feel emotions after I'm on social media. Mm-hmm. But I also go to social media when I'm feeling emotions. Yeah. Um, but it's not. So it is a very if people understood. There's so many times where I literally know I'm on my phone because I am. And Justin actually has learned to know how much trauma I'm in based on how I'm interacting with my phone. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, wa- I'll watch and I'll be like, oh, she's going through a lot of pain because I can see her hitting the phone here, here and mm-hmm. here and here. Yeah. And I'm like, something's going on for her today or over the course of this week. And I mm-hmm. need to get in- involved and ask. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like, it's like an escape mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. It's an escape. Mm-hmm. But most people, again, have forgotten to do check-ins. We just get so yeah. in the habit. Social media is such a habit. It's subconscious. Our brain is designed um, to take things that we do regularly and put them into the part of our brain where we're not consciously thinking about them anymore because mm-hmm. it's constantly trying to free up space. So you only have so much space to think about things. Mm-hmm. And so our brain, like a great example of this is when we open a door, like I'm never thinking, how do I turn a doorknob? Right. <laughs> I'm never thinking I need to reach my hand out, <laughs> grab the doorknob and then turn it to the right. I'm never mm-hmm. thinking that because yeah. my brain has done that so many times. It has thrown it into a habit category. Habits no longer take up my brain space because yeah. my body and my emotions just know how to do it. And we're not thinking about it. And mm-hmm. I feel like that is what social media is. We are all just doing it without thinking about it. Yeah. We're just getting on to scroll. I mean, I can't tell you how many times in the middle of something, I will just click it, look at it, and then I'll be like, what am I doing? I, I actually am not even meaning to do this. It's mm-hmm. literally just a habit that has just taken over again subconsciously right. to do that. Yeah. So the idea of like your friend being like, I should check in with myself. I think most people aren't doing that around social media. Right. And I think that's where I think that's where my goal with people would be like actually check in because mm-hmm. there's something that culturally has just become so normal. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's slowing down. I mean, they're talking about the metaverse now. Like I was going to bring that up. What's the metaverse? Oh, no, Abby. Oh. The metaverse. Reminds about I've talked so much trash on Facebook posts that are from from Zuckerberg and metaverse because I've seen it come up and it is the worst thing on the face of planet to hit humanity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> metaverse. Abby. Okay. <laughs> I have a, I have a visceral reaction to this bullshit. Okay? okay. That's what I feel about it because now it's this virtual world that Mark Zuckerberg has is all about creating so that we all have actual we plug on our virtual headsets and we go into our virtual homes and we have our virtual meetings and it's all a conversation about we're connecting the world and everyone's going to be more connected because they're going to be in metaverse and you're going to do business here and relationships and games and it's a sense of like oh 
you're about to lose your humanity lost in this digital mm-hmm. world and actual relational experiential connection is about to disappear in that space. Okay, well, sounds dark. <laughs> it's it's it, it can feel pretty dark. It's pretty mind blowing. It kind of feels like Ready Player One or like oh, it, absolutely. It, it feels absolutely like we're in the movie. Like Ready yeah. Player One. Yes. Or like Free Guy. Yes, or exactly. Like, it feels like it's exactly that same. They're just trying to make like a, the virtual world instead of you looking into a screen, you can walk into it. Right. And it Got be it. normal with like normal life. Mm. Um, which I saw, you know, us kind of going towards. I, it feels scary how soon it is yeah. to totally. me. Um, but anyway, with that, I just I feel like this kind of thing is I'm really going to be s- slowing down by just yeah. So I think it really takes like personally having to actually have a check in with yourself of like what is my motivation of being on here? Mm-hmm. What are the parameters that I need to do for myself? I mean, like I know that there's healthy things out there now, of, like totally. you know, turning off your notifications because. Yes. There's a psychological thing that happens when every time there's a thing, thing, your mind is immediately like there's something you haven't seen and you immediately want to go towards it. Yep. So it's like sometimes like turning off notifications or like, um, you know, putting screen time alerts of how long you've been on it. Like there's different mm-hmm. things, but I think it really is like you knowing kind of like, OK, when I am trying to escape, I go on this. So maybe like yeah. let me check on myself before I do. Yes. I'm a little bit on the extremist where I'm like, I just don't. I want to be a part of the name of like this cultural thing. And that does not mean that I won't in the future at some point, sure. be like whatever, I'm going to go back on it. But for right now, I'm like, this just feels good to learn this a world in this way. And I think one, um, one other thing I heard the other day was how we, I, I was hearing a speaker and he was like, our generation has confused the difference between being great and being famous mm. like greatness oh, and yeah. fame Come on. is very confused now yes. because you think that in order to be great you have to have fame yes but the reality is that and you automatically decide if somebody's famous they're great exactly but the reality is that if you're famous mm. that does not mean that you're great no no and if you're great you, you may not that, you may not be you, famous you may never yes. be famous so yeah. i think the reality is like to know what you actually want Mm. and i guess i've decided like for myself i'm like i want i do want greatness but i don't want that to mean i have to have a following on instagram so because that feels like so vain to me like i want that to be more like character and the people in front of me and how they feel around me and how i feel how i can communicate with the people Mm -hmm. around me and not just hide in my room and escape to a world totally you know like it just it really does it depends what you want Mm -hmm. and i think that that means different things for people Mm. and i understand the things that keep people on social media and that a lot of that stuff is understandable but when you know your motivation and what you want from it i think that really makes a difference you know yeah you know it's interesting is i think that there's a potential for a full-blown revolution actually that comes out of your generation Mm. those that were born into it and that they start trickling out of it and they start going oh my gosh like what like what you did you're like oh i feel so alive i feel so confident i feel like so so many other experiences are actually happening for me it feels like there's a potential invitation where that whole generation could reject something like metaverse or other things like that where they go no we don't want this we want real life we've never had real life (laughs) yeah it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I think that the dangerous thing is like they start doing things bit younger by bit. And younger, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. It's like, like the, even the metaverse thing, it's like, we're not going to go in a full on metaverse right off the bat. Like no. this is no. something within the next 10 years. They could throw us in it right off the bat. They would have the ability to. Right. They're going to trickle it out. They're going <laughs> to, exactly. Because we, like when people saw about that, a lot of people are responding like, whoa, hold on. Like, should we really, should we be uh, considering saw, this stuff? I saw so many people have such aggression just like me because we're yeah. all viscerally reacting, being like, yeah, we know this isn't that good thing for of our like, soul. Instagram was just a little bit more of a instant way to compare yourself than Facebook was. Yeah. And then TikTok, like everything is getting your attention span. Like we just get more, it's like a, a, what frog that gets boiled in the water like if you just turn up the heat slowly mm-hmm. you don't notice that you're yeah. being boiled yeah 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 exactly and i think that that really has been what what's been happening so we i think compromise our soul a little bit at a right. time 
right until we don't even recognize like the yeah. line that we used to think was crazy isn't yeah. anymore yeah and i realize that now being off it because now when people know that i'm not on it people are like what like and they want to know about it and i i think i'm i'm starting to forget vice versa what it means to be on it mm. because now i'm like yeah like i'm off social media i still know that it's a, like it's 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 not common but i think i'm starting to forget how much time you spend mm-hmm. on it like even this friend really like she was saying about how you know like it's the first like i remember me talking about it. it's the first thing you look up in the morning and the last thing you look at oh, night totally i'm i'm forgetting those things because you're not doing i'm it. not doing them yeah i'm like oh like i'm just i just go home and then i go to bed or like read something i don't know like i do things differently but that's becoming normal to me mm. so now i'm aware of like so you're like out of the old habits yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, I think it took months to yes. really be out of it because then what happens They're is that you can ingrained habits yes and what happens is that then you could go towards pinterest or you could go towards youtube totally or you can go towards so many other things that are out there to distract you yes so you it really takes like a muscle like you have to like yeah re, re- self-control yes and like really retrain your brain and like all these different things so it really is like a whole journey but i think that um yeah i'm starting to forget but i'm seeing people now from this outside perspective of like wow like you're really your mind is really consumed by this mm. and i think that we all have to be honest with ourselves too about how this stuff affects us. And at the end of the day, like, yeah, sure, you can say you don't care how many followers you have or you can say you don't care how many likes you have. Come but on. the reality is that everyone cares a little totally. bit. Totally. Mm-hmm. And call it out. And yes. it doesn't matter how many followers you have. I actually, I think I was, also this is making me realize I watch a lot of like TED Talks or like <laughs> documentaries or stuff, but I saw a TED Talk uh, where he mentioned like for celebrities he was like when you reach five million followers then you are thinking oh but this other actor has has 10 10 million followers so you're like so you're never enough you never arrive because there's always someone that has more than you do yep so it's like sure maybe you have 200 followers and you're looking at the people that have 500 and you're like but there's somebody that has 15k who's looking at the other person that they compare themselves to that has 30k and like you will always (laughs) be in that cycle always be losing so exactly you will always be losing so to think of again that friend i love how you mentioned it that way that is constantly telling you you're a failure yes (laughs) that is so sad it's so sad but i think that it really takes people it takes us being honest of like this is how this is affecting me I'm being honest that this stuff I actually care about. I'm actually comparing myself. Mm -hmm. I'm actually aware of how I'm reaching a certain amount of followers or how I'm not Mm -hmm. like or how I posted this. And some people like like it's such a real thing that we care about. And so I think that that's the fear of me getting back on sometimes because I'm honest with myself of like now I have to think that I would start at zero you know totally and i'm like i'm honest that i still care about that (laughs) i can't just go back (laughs) to like having a certain amount you know and so the idea of that you know is is just a conversation that i think people need to have in general with each other and with how that affects them you know it's really good one of the things that i think is you do a great you're very very balanced like you're aware like i'd like people to check in but you also like in lots of our conversation, you're like, I understand why people like being on it. Mm-hmm. I understand, like, there's a lot of empathy and compassion. You haven't yeah. villainized mm-hmm. social media. Yeah. You've just said, like, personally, it is worth it yeah. to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, yeah, because I have no, I, my goal is so not to be like, Instagram is the devil. Totally. Like, you know, like, yeah. I'm like, I, I truly, it has helped in some ways and you know it's hurt in some and it has hurt in some ways um but yeah i think it's i think i know for myself as a person i know that i could be kind of black and white on things Mm -hmm. so i know that i'm like this is the way i approach certain certain things like once it hits like a value for me or like a like a moral i'm like that's it like there's nothing i can compromise if you hit that one thing yes but that is different for different people and um and that's totally okay but it would be wrong, I think, to not admit that we Absolutely. all need to have a moment of thinking this through honesty. and a moment of honesty. And yeah. coming out of the like, really, 
If you think about a frog that's in water and the water's slowly heating up so you're not noticing the temperature, mm -hmm. if the frog got out of the water mm -hmm. long enough that when it went back into the water, it could tell what the temperature was, yeah. it would be, and that's basically what you're calling people to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's step out enough to think about how this is affecting how us. How hot right? is the water? How hot yeah. is this water? And, and mm -hmm. I felt personally challenged, uh, to be honest, when I heard Ooh, her share. Good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there isn't a conclusion yet. I just can uh, probably yeah. like kind of what she shared when she first heard that statement of do you even exist? And she was like, I didn't like that. Something began like churning in me where I was like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you're. And, and that's why I was actually excited to have this conversation again, because I knew like for me having multiple conversation mm -hmm. helped yeah. where I'm like, this is going to take me a little bit of time to chew on. Mm -hmm. Um, That I really, really like because ultimately so much of our job is like how to help people get out of pain. And so sometimes we are choosing social media, which is choosing pain. Mm -hmm. Like, but we all want mm -hmm. out of pain, but we're choosing the thing that keeps us in it. Yeah. So it's a, what are you, okay. Now that you've been surprised by the subject and the conversation, because you didn't know this is what was yeah. talking about. What do you think? What do you feel? Well, what I think it's thoughts? fantastic conversation. I'm, I, I'm in your corner with stuff. I've actually always had, uh, um, a love hate relationship with social media. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would veer more towards, I don't care about likes and mm -hmm. I can't say that I, I don't notice them. Right. Yeah. But I'm more like, uh, when I see people have emotions, I get it theoretically mm -hmm. about likes and, and about all their, the metrics that are happening. But right. at the same time, I'm like, that's not real life. That doesn't mean anything about you. Yeah. Why are you drawing value from that? And yeah. so even for me, um, Speaking about social media, you'll, you know, if you're ever on my Instagram, I don't post that often. I don't think my life's that great and doesn't have that many things that need to be posted mm -hmm. about. And well, I mean, me and you both live that way. Yeah, we, we both live that way, but still I'm, I'm there and I have had times where I would do the scroll thing. I'd, w I'd wake up, I'd wake up and start part of my waking up was scrolling in months ago, um, even through, um, 20, uh, 2020 to 2021, um, I, I had followed both sides of the aisle in politics, people from both sides watching like how they're responding back and forth to each mm -hmm. other and things like that. And, and trying to catch the narratives that everyone's sending and stuff. But what I realized is like, I was like dying in my soul. And there was like <laughs> this in thing inside of me that was like, I have to unfollow all these people. And that yeah. was actually really tough for me because I found safety in knowing about the battles and mm -hmm. like, how do I position myself and my future? And I was like, mm -hmm. that's wrong that I'm even tied to their social media propaganda wars back and forth yeah. that are giving me either comfort or a sense of control. And so I unfollowed a bunch of them and, and then I was like, I don't even have anything to look at on my scrolls except for my action figure stuff, <laughs> which <laughs> mostly that is mostly who Justin follows. Yeah, action, I, action figure, figure accounts, guys and, and reviews nice. on action <laughs> figures and stuff. But um, even recently, I watched a, um, um, video. A, a, a video where they were talking about what sleep does for you and how you get like best REM rest sleep and how it's supposed to heal you and what you're, what you fully get out of your um, night sleep healing process is actually subverted by immediately scrolling when you wake up. Mm -hmm. And so I purposely stopped scrolling. I wouldn't touch social media for an hour after yeah. I woke up, I wouldn't get on. And I started like, that was a little difficult at first, Yeah, but I started going like, I feel more happy. I don't feel anxiety because even if I'm not purposely tr like trying mm -hmm. to follow things that give anxiety, it's just one headline like, then, then this happened. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And so what I'm finding is I'm waking up connecting to my dream life that happened again mm -hmm. um, and having clarity for what I want my day to look like mm -hmm. and coming alive to that. All that said, that part of my journey and this conversation, mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. I love that you, I got to be part of this surprise conversation <laughs> um, with Stephanie. And I am, I'm really in awe of you that you made that decision. And um, I love the byproduct. I really hope it inspires people. Like I, I, I can say like, like you said, there's balance. There's there's valuable things that social media gives opportunity for. I think if I 
wasn't trying to reach people with a conversation about emotional health. And I, maybe my job was more around the ways of like, I was in construction and things like that. I would just walk away Mm -hmm. altogether. Like, Mm -hmm. I think I do want obviously a a way to communicate to our audience in ways. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would be okay if all of social media burned to the ground and all <laughs> like the day. Do you remember? Do you guys remember the day that Facebook and Instagram went mm-hmm. down? Yeah, sometimes that was recently, right? Yes. Oh, it yeah. was amazing. <laughs> I saw so many people on like Google because I was like, "What's happening?" And I saw people freaking out on Twitter about mm-hmm. it. And I was like, "The world didn't end." it probably just got a little bit more peaceful because we don't have to hear people's terrible opinions. Well, it's an interesting <laughs> thing, right? Because I think about when I used to like fast sugar uh-huh. Um, because I was addicted to sugar at a very young age. Thanks, mom. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when I think about when I used to fast sugar, you have huge cravings mm-hmm. for the first like, yeah, it could be sometimes a couple of weeks. Sometimes it goes away faster. But after that, it's like your body re-regulates and you know that you don't need to crave that anymore. And I think one of the things I loved is you talking about like it being around like five to six months when your body like re-regulated, right. you got a new normal mm-hmm. um, where you weren't feeling those, the cravings yeah. and the pull as much. Yeah. I, I, I will say this to kind of wrap as we're wrapping this up. I think that really your message that you're, that we're, as we're having a dialogue with you and you're sharing about it, you're really talking about self-awareness. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like you're sit, you're you're having a you're 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 putting out a battle cry like, hey guys, it's time to be self aware. Like wake right. up. Pay what attention. is happening mm-hmm. inside of you? What is your experiences? Yeah. What are you running from? What are you running to? What How are you, are you coping with that inside of the space? What are you thinking? How are you being affected? Mm-hmm. And so it's just shaking people awake. Even if people were like, yeah, I I didn't go out and delete my my social media accounts but I rewired entirely how I approached everything because I started right. seeing that I have needs in a million ways that aren't getting taken care of and they've been being medicated over in this space. Mm-hmm. And now I'm actually living a healthier, more fuller life because of it. That'd be awesome. But one mm-hmm. of my things would be like, um, one of my things would be, I think everybody should question if they should. Because if you can't even fathom deleting it, yeah, if you can't fathom life without it, that does feel like it has a very strong pull on you. Mm-hmm. And it's good. I like people to be free and it's good to be aware of like freedom. And mm-hmm. um, so I just think it's a, a good conversation to have. If you guys decide to hop off social media, join our email list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you we can, can go to justinandabby.com. <laughs> justinandabby.com. And, and you can sign up for our email list and hear from us. Then we can still chat with you. This next yeah. year is our, our goal to like actually utilize and like Utilize it and send a lot of updated videos yep. and, and content and stuff like that. That's going to be a big thing. Yeah. Um, I think that you are brilliant. I think mm-hmm. you can tell how much you have deep thought. You're authentic. Yeah, there's so much you maturity. Live what you say. Mm-hmm. You're a great communicator. I felt personally challenged so much. Um, I think just seeing somebody live well is the best way you can challenge. Instead of having the mm-hmm. best meme and the best quote and the best whatever, yeah. see- seeing somebody walk out the process well is the most challenging thing. And I just... Mm-hmm. I was so inspired by our conversation. I'm so inspired by this conversation. I, I'm in, I'm hopeful about all that it will inspire for people who are listening. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story. And uh, a, a practical thing just to let everyone who's listening know, um, Living Fully Live this year is going to, we're going to start, it, the, it'll actually go live in January to sign up and it'll launch in March. We pushed it back because of how we're wanting to navigate our life this year. And so if you want to get in the know on that and be informed the minute we launch that, you can go to justinandabbyabi.com and you can go to the Living Fully Alive page and click on one of the uh, buttons to buy now or something. I think right now is how I have it set up. And you can just, it'll give you a pop-up and you can sign up for that list. Yeah, and today, right before I came, I did, uh, we started a life consulting masterclass Mm -hmm. where we, so I did a live consulting session this morning and then we debriefed and talked through how how I did everything, why I did everything. We are teaching trauma-informed ways to help people connect to themselves, connect to each other and connect to God. And um, 
watching the class is unbelievable, but we get questions all the time. How do I become a life consultant? What do I do? What's the pathway? And there's so many pathways. The pathway that we've created to help people is you start with living fully alive. And then after that, there's an, culture. There's mm-hmm. an opportunity to, an you have to do that to join the master class that we do once a year. Yeah. It's a year long program and it will radically change your life. Yeah. So I'm sure many of you got something out of this. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and share to people and let them know about it. Because I think this, like, yes. go out onto your social media. Yeah. And Use share. your social media for good. Use <laughs> to your bring social media. To its knees. Yes. Let's <laughs> nice. do that. Use your social media to awake people about social media. Mm-hmm. And it's start really the great. revolution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but one Come last, on. one last, last thing is uh, we have a, a spot on our what new website because we want to yes. hear what you guys what want do you guys want to talk about. about and hear about with what us? are the topics you want to cover what are the questions that you have we want to start interacting with our audience much more this year that's yep our goal One of for our big goals 20 what year are we going into? 2022 i don't even know what year it is mm-hmm. um but so we want to start interacting more with you guys so hit us up on there there's a place yep, to actually you can, write you can actually go to the connected life page on our website and you can give us your ideas of what you'd like to hear. And if we choose the topic that you share, we'll even highlight your name here on the podcast uh, as we jump into it. So Steph, you're a rock star. Thank you guys. Really appreciate being here. I'm glad you were, uh, we had that little conversation with that picture. <laughs> I'm glad we were uh, trying a motto over there by accident. <laughs> but it's so really true. great. I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Awesome. All right, everybody. Peace out.